Well, let's just say the playoffs did not go anywhere near as well as we'd hoped. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Episode 48, Football Manager 21, and our climbing the ladder single team save with De Groff Shop in the Netherlands. Well, we had another showdown with our former goalkeeper Case with Feyenoord, and they beat us 2 1 in the home leg, uh, their home leg, and uh, then they beat us 3 1 on the road at our place to beat us. 5-2 on aggregate, and knock us out of the playoffs. So no Europe for us this year. So we're getting into the end-of-season review. Let's take a look at the new arrivals. Jean DeVos, 24-year-old uh, winger, very good, 7.42 rating, 3 goals, 6 assists. Anton Kernjik was our signing of the season, 32 goals, 11 assists for him. Uh, there is some big teams possibly sniffing around him. We have a $10.5 million buyout for anybody in the Champions League. And if we get that, I don't think we could turn it down. I mean, we need to be a selling club uh, most of the time. So I uh, fully expect him to maybe be leaving if they meet that valuation. Um, Nick Mott, uh, Nurk Meyer, 7.05 rating, 11 assist for him in the midfield. Aaron played well as well, 22 sub appearances. Joseph Casella, 35 starts for us on the back line. We got an A grade for him, and he scored seven goals there. Kevin Kaiser, 6.85 rating, 15 starts since signing him in the midseason. And Dick Van, Dirk Van Beckel, seven starts uh, for us at center back. Uh, Muhlenstein, Okachi, 37 starts for him. Didn't play great. I wasn't highly impressed. So hopefully he can uh, come on in the second season. Some people just take that extra year to kind of Settle in, get acclimated to your tactic. Uh, that's our transfers in, the big ones. Taking a look, let's sort by valuation. Transfers out, Galam Shetahull goes to Almir City for just short of $5 million. 29 starts, three goals, four assists. For those numbers, I'm really glad that we did sell him. Chris Natumba, $8.75 million, uh, 11 goals, five assists. For him at Utrecht, Laval, 800,000, DeVries, 1.2 million, Elena, 1.1 million, and the rest of the guys there. I don't know how that's sorting. What is that? It's not sorting by valuation or alphabetically. So I think that's broken. Oh, well. Uh, let's just scroll through any other big ones. Banachek, a million and a half, never played. Uh, Sakalo, a million and a half, 51 starts on the season. Olivier, 1.2 million. Jegu, 2.9 million. 4.2 million for Neteb. Some pretty big sales this year. 2.9 million for Vigneron. He played nine matches at a 6.62. Not what you expect when you drop that kind of money. So we were supposed to avoid relegation. We uh, and then it said mid table, uh, but it was avoiding relegation. Uh, we finished seventh, so we did very well there. Eighty-seven percent in attendance and thirty-one uh, league goals uh, in the Arita VC for us. So very good results there. B minus in the Euro Cup. We got a C grade. Knocked out in the fourth qualifying round. Uh, and they wanted us to reach group stage. So nothing we did right there. Dutch Cup, they wanted us to reach the third round. Got knocked out by Eindhoven in the second round. And we got a C grade there. There's your moments to remember. Matches to remember. Goal of the season was from Vicario. One of his two goals against Ajax. Financially. 
Of course, this doesn't change for a little while. So, yeah, uh, sponsorship is down just a smidge. Uh, broadcast revenue down a smidge. Corporate hospitality. Uh, competition prize money. So we get a little bit extra this year. And match day retail uh, down just slightly. And I think that's due. Last year, we had two more matches in the playoffs. I think that had something to do with it. Vicario's our top selling jersey, 9,224 jerseys sold. Kernjik, Meyer, Resnick, and DeVos as well. That's not bad finishing fifth in, in jersey sales when you were only here half a season. Our best 11, Vicario and Kernjik up top, Servinka and Resnick on the wings. Grutunk, Meyer in the mid, Barisic, Gerver, Kaisela, Okachi on the back line, and Delcroix in goal. Uh, I would, you know, Delcroix did pretty good, but again, I, I think we signed a better goalkeeper. Nothing that we could do there. Club awards, fans player of the season was Kernjik, the 20-year-old attacking midfielder. Uh, young player of the season and signing of the season are the same. Vicario, the goal of the season. Top goal scorer was Anton Kernjik with 32 goals. Resnick, 12 assists, the most assist for the club. 10 players of the match for Kernjik. He also had a 7.4 average rating, best on the club. 37 passes completed per 90 for Meyer in the midfield. New records for the club. Uh, Kernjik with 32 goals, 31 goals in uh, league goals in the season, three goals in a, in a league match, and 10 player of the matches on the season. Kernjik just rewriting the record books. Nothing on the competition front for us. Let's take a revisit to the club vision and expectations. Uh, so next season, mid-table is what they're going to expect. Two years from now, they want a top half finish, which we've already done, maintain a top half finish. And then my contract, of course, was just extended through the 59-60 season. And they're not expecting anything more than finishing in the top half. So I can live with that. We'll accept that. Atmosphere and support for leadership are holding steady. So let me just double check this. Mid-table. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the off season, get into some transfer business. So we'll come back uh, probably around July 1st when I've got some news on that front. This was interesting. I don't think I have ever seen this or gotten this before. Uh, if I have, it's been a while. But uh, Anton Kernjik, the most lethal finisher in Europe winning the European Golden Shoe with a score of 62 from 31 goals, beating out Russell Broad from Bayern Munich and Frantisek Novak from Man United. That's pretty big. I actually have gone to Kernjik, tried to offer him a new contract, and he... Ooh, hello. Hold on. Uh, can I remove that? Okay. Well, can I get it up to 32 million? Tell you what, I'll take that. Because we have a, right now he has a buyout clause of, I think, 12 and a half, 10.75. So if we can rate, you know, I think so. I think there's quite a few teams coming in on him. In fact, we can take a look. Look at the teams. Danes is in the Bundesliga. Gent, uh, Shadero in League Un. Feyenoord FC Twenty AZ Standard in the Belgian Pro League. I mean, that's some high level clubs. And I think most, if not all of them, could afford that $11 million. So if we can turn it around and get 32 for him, I'm all for that. Or better yet, keep him, right? <laughs> keep him. That would be the goal. I do want to go in. Uh, where is he? Because uh, we just offered him 62, right? 
So he's making 41. He's worth 62 making that kind of, you know, that kind of production. So anyway, uh, wanted you guys to see that. Uh, we are, oh, initial budgets. Let's take a look at that. We get hit with a tax bill of 3.6. There is our final commercial summary information. Scouting budget, $338,000. So we will scout Central Europe more than we can afford, but the next package down is less than 100000 Initial budgets. 7.3 on transfers and 1.35 on payroll. So we've got about $400,000 in monthly wage bill. And I do it by month because all the earnings and stuff are by month. And it's just easier for me to kind, kind of figure it out. The per week thing just throws me off. Um, because, of course, here in America, you know, salaries are done annually. And, you know, then, you know, you can break it down. But weekly just throws me off. I, I'm not used to doing those calculations. But that's not a bad wage bill. We have made a couple of early transfers. Uh, Giovanni Profit comes in from Fortuna Sitar for $1.4 million. Uh, he is a left winger, left midfielder. Uh, there is some interest in Cervenka. So just, you know, this was kind of, just in case Cervenka leaves, he's also a, a local kid. He's, he's Dutch from the Netherlands, four and a half star ability. So this was just kind of covering myself just in case we do lose him. And uh, we also sold off a young player, Ram uh, Ramon Vanderpool, to young boys for 240000 17 17-year-old, uh, below average center back, doesn't have any pace uh, certainly felt we could get rid of him. So fingers crossed, Kernjik will sign that new deal and that will take all of the suitors off of his scent and we won't have to worry about that anymore. Well, we have not helped the Netherlands out with our drop out of Europe this year. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we remained in seventh position, but we tumbled 11... Uh, Tumbled 11 places. Um, thought we finished pretty well, but we dropped from what's that 188 to 190, 187 to 198. And evidently, our coefficient for the country drops from fifth to sixth with Belgium jumping over us. So we had two teams in the group stage, it's now one. We had a playoff team. Uh, now we have none. We have now we have a third and a second qualifying round rather than the playoff. And if we take a look here, nation coefficients. So let's see. We had a we had a nine point oh eight. They had a good year. They've had back to back good years and really overtook us pretty solidly. Uh, so we are now 10 points behind them. And we've got, you know, we both have pretty good years. They have a better year. and then, But we've got this one really bad year holding us back as a nation. Uh, oh, wait, that's not us. That's them. I, I have no understanding or concept of how the coefficients are judged or determined. No clue. No clue whatsoever. But anyway, wanted you guys to see that because that's probably some important news for the save. All right, we've made it to July 1st. We've done a little bit of business. We've sold a couple of people, but here are the incoming signings. Uh, young goalkeeper Nicky O'Malley. Uh, wasn't a guy I particularly liked. He had good ratings, but his eccentricity is just through the ceiling and i honestly don't know how that is going to play out but he's still a b minus grade two star current ability just more depth in the goalkeeper role and we've been burned with several of our goalkeepers leaving so i'm a believer in this particular save of signing good goalkeepers when they 
become available just because I never know when I'm going to need to pluck another one out of the, uh, out of the bin. So, uh, we've signed him, uh, $300,000, not too bad. Uh, Cho Young Juan, a 21 year old center back. Uh, he is two and a half star current. We get a B minus grade. Uh, he is going to be depth at center back and Zlato Z J Zavich, Zavich. I'm going to go with Zavich. Six hundred thousand, three star, C plus grade, attacking midfielder. Uh, with that tactic that we played last match in the second half, there is a number ten there, a shadow striker, and I needed some more players in that position because I don't really have any. Don't know if we're going to go with that long term, but I wanted to at least give it a try. Uh, and uh, Young Juan. Uh, $2.3 million. Taking a look at him, he can play all three positions. He's not a great, he's not even a good crosser, but he's average. Four star potential, so he can play all the way across the back line. And I think that's going to be something we're going to need. So let me get all these guys sent off. We also brought in Ahmed Oz Odemir, Odzimir, Odzimir, I guess. 22-year-old mid, attacking midfielder. Midfielder. We needed some depth in the mid because uh, we made it. We did sell somebody, and we were pretty slim there last year. So we brought him in from Union Berlin. Uh, we're paying 100% of his salary and uh, two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential, C plus grade for that. And if we take a look at the rest of the transfers. We moved uh, Rene Damon to Heracles along with Eamon Ayu for uh, almost 500000 between them. Uh, Tak Jae Hyung goes off for 230000 to that club. Um, Mohamed Farouz, I really regret this deal. In fact, I had him listed. I had accepted this offer. And then a couple of weeks passed and then nothing had happened. I got another offer and I said, no, you know, now I, I don't think I want to sell him. So I pulled him off the transfer market, but I didn't delete the bid. And then when it came up, I just hit accept just out of habit, basically. Oops. So he's gone. Uh, Leandro Martina, we actually signed him to a new deal but and loaned him out. And then uh, Danilo Muhlenstein goes off to Danes for $2.6 million. He was 23 years old. He was a left winger, but not, not the greatest. We got him on a free, so we make a nice profit from him. And again, you know, we still have Geert T uh, Thielmans out there that was out on loan last year. I'm still pretty high on him, but he's back from loan, so we're going to be looking for him to be playing a little bit this year. In fact, while I'm thinking about it, let me take that off. I don't think he still wants to leave. We'll figure that out at some point. On the incoming side, we had brought in profit. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, we get a free transfer from on Alexander Dimitro <laughs> Dimitrovich. That's what I'm going with. Uh, he is a 6'1 center back. He's pretty good. He's 19-year-old Serbian. Uh, I had to sign him as an important player. I wanted him to be a squad player. I wanted him to be our number three guy. Uh, but he would not hear it, so he's going to be slotting in probably at right back and filling in at left back when I need him over there. Uh, Nicky O'Malley, of course, we just talked about, Odzimir Juan and uh, Zlatko Javich. Those are the new guys coming in. Taking a look at finances, uh, we started off with $7.31 million. We're still at $7.31 million. Uh, with the sales, but we have added to the payroll a couple of new contracts uh, for some guys, but the big signing, because we did get a $22 million bid for him, which was well over his release clause. Luckily, we had already made the contract extension, which we did in one of the, in, the cut-ins just a little while ago. He signed that deal. So his buyout, his release clause went from 10 and three quarter million to $32 million. I think that was a good bit of business. And we got probably six bids for him, but they were all, we had one at about 11, one at the 22, which I was tempted to take. 
But it, I wasn't going to be able to sign anybody as good for that price. I mean, he was just in the golden, you know, he was the golden boot, the golden shoe winner or whatever it was. Um, a little bit of time has passed since I put that bid in a, a little while ago for you, but uh, that's what it is. So we're at July 1st. Uh, we do have um, some friendlies coming up here. We'll get into that. I'm going to try to break in the new tactic. I know the 424 works, or at least works decently. So we will have that on the on the back burner uh, for us to fall back on if this uh, 3412 doesn't work. Um, but we'll look at that. And I still have some possible transfer news. Let's take a quick look at the team report. So we've got Kaiser, Delcroix. Uh, somebody came in for Delcroix, and we accepted it, but then he rejected the, the, the move. So that was interesting. Uh, Gerver, Samir, Kaisela, Van Beckel, and Dimitrovich. Uh, so if we go with this three-back system, this actually may work out. We'd be able to play uh, Dimitrovich, uh, Kaisela, and Gerver, and then have Van Beckel uh, coming off the bench. Samir is probably leaving. We've got four clubs, I think, that have met his release clause of eight and a half million. It's just waiting for him to sign a deal, work out, work out agreements with them. But he's going to be leaving. So we are going to have a pretty decent back line, uh, whichever way we go with two or three center backs. Uh, Okachi can slide in there. Uh, we also signed the, uh, was he South Korean? Yes, he was. Um, Young Juan, who we just signed. So he'll be in the mix there. Cervenka on the left. Uh, Doran Bosch is leaving. Basic signed a new deal. Profit's a new player. Meyer, Grutunk, Javic will be in that mix. Uh, Ozdemir's on loan this year. So we've upped our midfield now. We've, we've got four deep there. Uh, DeVos, of course. Javic, Aaron. Tielmans will be there. And I'm probably going to continue trying to train Tielmans on the left as well. I don't think he's good enough. But also, because we don't have that attacking right winger uh, with Vicario back in, Resnick can slide back. Uh, Meyer can move up from the midfield if we need him to. Javich can replace him, or he can be the number 10 as well. Uh, and that leaves us with Kernjik and Vicario up top. Resnick being our depth. And do we have anybody in the development center? Nicky Malley. Not really. I mean, he is now the best, best guy that we have in our youth system. But you can see, look at that eccentricity of 14. That just, I figured it would be interesting to watch that play out. You know, if he has any really goofy plays, that would just be odd. Um, but anyway, could be a star player better than Kaiser. And that's what we're looking for is some people that can step in and push. So nobody in the youth system right now that's really ready to challenge. So uh, anyway, we'll come back. Why don't we go ahead and end the episode there? I mean, this is a transfer special. So let me get through the friendlies, get up to the first match of the season. So next episode, we'll come back. We'll finalize any last transfers here during July, and we'll have our opening match of the season. Take a look at how our squad is going to pan out. And hopefully by that time, I'll have made a decision on which tactic to go with this year. So uh, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you are new. And don't forget, I do have daily content going up, football manager related, Monday through Saturday. Uh, we also have a couple of other saves going on. Uh, I have a sim airport save just for fun. That's just going to be once, you know, once or twice a week. And then I also just started a American football journeyman uh, with uh, an uh, sim based game a tech sim game called bullbound college football and it's gotten really good views on it already for my channel uh certainly better than my football manager views but uh my football manager is not going anywhere so uh thank you so much also just in case you missed it last friday was the channel's 2000th video so we have a huge library 
of content. Uh, hopefully it's gotten better over time, but I do want to thank any of you guys that have looked at any of my videos over the years. Just thank you so much. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.